Hey there folks, I'm Mark, in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and it's a weird week as we've got the Metro Boomin' Across the Spider-Verse episode, along with plenty else, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. So this is the sort of album bomb week I always find kind of interesting. Not that it happened and honestly caught me a bit off guard in a way that it shouldn't have. Sorry folks, I have not yet seen Across the Spider-Verse. Just totally slipped my mind that Metro Boomin curated a soundtrack and it's making serious waves. But also that it effectively just replaced the album bomb from Lil Durk last week. So any chart motion feels relatively minor, all things considered. It's still a pretty hefty week, but with a little bit more variety, and that is most mostly appreciated. Of course, that does not apply to our top 10, where for another goddamn week, Last Night by Morgan Wallen is squatting at number one. And honestly, I don't know what's gonna beat it. It rules streaming, the radio growth has not slowed down, the margin that it's building between it and everything else, it's only getting bigger. And that means even if Flowers by Miley Cyrus went up to number two because it's not losing as fast on the radio and it's stable on streaming, it's not remotely a challenger here. Hell, while well, Calm Down by Rima and Selena Gomez also rose to number three with continued radio growth, it just doesn't, doesn't have anything else here to really make a proper run, and I honestly think it's close to its peak. Now, what makes this interesting is Fast Car by Luke Combs rising to number four. Given the radio and the streaming growth, if there is going to be someone who could close that margin with Morgan Wallen, it might just be Luke Combs. And if anyone had told me the duel for dominance of the very top of the Hot 100 would come down between these two guys five years ago, there's no probably about it. I would have called you crazy. Now next, as expected, off the album bomb, All My Life by Lil Durk featuring J. Cole. It slipped back to number five. The streaming ebbed back a little bit, but radio is picking up the slack here. And Kill Bill by SZA held at number six, mostly as streaming is stable as it slowly bled on the radio. Then we saw a slight pickup for 2C for favorite song to number seven. The album probably Probably helped for a bit of a jump on streaming to coincide with good radio, which is not something I can say for A La Bella Sola by Esla Bonarmado and Peso Pluma down to number 8, as the streaming remains really strong, but that's really all it's got. Then we saw a slight boost for Creepin' by Metro Boomin, 21 Savage, in the weekend up to number 9. I'm guessing some residual crossover from Metro Boomin given his album bomb, although Creepin' did actually have an okay radio week, but I put more of it down to Karma by Taylor Swift and Ice Spice dropping off sharply to number 10. It did have a good radio week, but with streaming and sales both going down, it may have peaked prematurely here. And on that note, our losers and our dropouts. In the latter category, it was not a good week for Morgan Wallen's lesser hits, as I wrote the book, Everything I Love, and Man Made a Bar with Eric Church. It looks like they're all going to be pretty well short of any year-end list territory for 2023. But absolutely will, will make the list is as it was by Harry Styles finally making its long overdue exit. But as I said, not really that many losers here, with most coming off the debut, like Hits Different by Taylor Swift down to 65, or Two Cuts from Lil Durk with Pele Code at 71, and War About It with 21 Savage at 84. Outside of that, Snow on the Beach by Taylor Swift and Lana Del Rey lost all the momentum off the return to 87. America Has a Problem by Beyonce featuring Kendrick Lamar is continuing to slide down to 66. And Human by Cody Johnson fell to 79 as it looks like it's going to fall out relatively soon. Kind of a shame. The song just never got going the way I really wanted it to to properly break through. It's likely going to miss the year on list too. That kind of sucks. Now for our returns and gains... And it's a little odd here, I'm not gonna lie. Especially when the returns include Jaded by Miley Cyrus coming back yet again to 98, and Trust Fall by Pink slipping back at 100. I mean, both these are pop songs that are floundering, that's all I'm saying. But of all the gains, they're in Country, with Bury Me in Georgia by Kane Brown ramping up to 77, It Matters to Her by Scotty McCreary getting a boost to 49, and I Need a Favor by Jelly Roll rising up to 20. In that case, I'm putting it down to his album dropping, giving him more of a boost. We will get more of that later on. But now onto the matter at hand. 
We are indeed in album bomb territory with Metro Boomin and Across the Spider-Verse, but only the fringes of it, which would imply anything below the top 40 and not the best nor the worst. I'm going to be a little bit more flexible this time, given that it accounts for all the new Metro Boomin songs, so with that in mind, Danger by Offset and J.I.D. at 95, All the Way Live by Metro Boomin, Future and Lil Uzi Vert at 61, Am I Dreamin' by Metro Boomin, ASAP Rocky and Royce, Annihilate by Metro Boomin, Sway Lee, Lil Wayne, and Offset at 44. And Calling by Metro Boomin, Sway Lee, Nav, and A Boogie with the Hoodie at 41. And now on for a still considerable list of new arrivals. Unfortunately, starting with number 92, Peaches and Eggplants by Young Nudie featuring 21 Savage. So I've generally avoided talking about Young Nudie on Billboard Breakdown. Hell, the couple times he's charted now, it's been as a guest on other people's songs, predominantly with his cousin, 21 Savage. But when you get a track with this title, I'm assuming it's tied to the emojis and a spurt of TikTok viralities while it's here. And oh good God, what is it with 2023 and rap sex songs that just completely mishandle the mood? The grim, eerie synths around the trap percussion with the occasional bell sounding off, Young Nudie sounding weird weirdly hoarse and hushed on the hook as the bow bow sounds fill up any sort of words or fill in for any words really and 21 savage once again proving that he shouldn't be anywhere near sex songs we know this and we've known it for years at least he quits himself better than young nudie who only occasionally locks into a pocket and fills the rest of his bars with off rhythm and increasingly ridiculous lines like come suck the meat and we be geeking like sun to the moon and that his girl was leaking and that he beat the pussy loose to the point of knocking down the walls. And you know what, if it was funny or delivered with any sort of flair, I might be more forgiving, but WAP, this is not. They all sound faintly embarrassed to be making this at all. Keep it in the drafts. Number 90, Hummingbird by Metro Boomin and James Blake. Stay on, stay on, stay on with me. This is the sort of song that doesn't feel like it should be charting at all. Riding an ancient sample of Tonight You Belong To Me that's pitched down and then shifted into the swelling, synth-inflected elegance that's been James Blake's formula for the past two albums. It feels almost indulgent with a five-plus minute runtime and Metro Boomin deliberately underplaying his trap percussion. But I'll say it, it's an indulgence that works. It captures the grand scope of the tortured love song that James Blake is sculpting and wondering if this woman will ever stick around past what she's shown him about himself and whether the love that he blindly thought was unconditional can actually hold up now that his strains that he placed on it have been revealed. Hell, with the mature romantic framing, it feels like something that the artist kind of smuggled onto the Across the Spider-Verse soundtrack to maybe surprise audiences with something that's unfamiliar to them, given that James Blake still has not really had a proper mainstream breakthrough, even if he should have had it a decade ago. But now that he's here, even if this probably won't last, it's really damn good. Check it out. Number 86, Save Me by Jelly Roll featuring Lainey Wilson. Don't waste your time on me. I'm so damaged beyond repair. Life has shattered my hopes and my dreams. I was divided about this. Son of a Sinner is a good song, but Need a Favor emphatically was not. And when you place this opposite Lainey Wilson's recent collab with Hot Country Nights, I mean, I know what I'm going to go seek out. But this track has a bit of an odd pedigree. It actually dates back to June of 2020, where it was a swerve to Jelly Roll's predominant audience, now with this modern remix for his new album, and, well, it plays into a very similar arc as Son of a Sinner, clinging to any booze and drugs for any stability. And while it does initially feel a little oversold against the spare acoustics and pedal steel. By the time the song properly opens up, it works a little bit better, even if it does feel a bit odd to play it as a duet when the writing really doesn't show much interplay. It feels more like commiseration than actually finding strength together. I mean, it's fine, I, I guess, but I don't quite think it works as well as it should. All I'm saying. Number 69, Ocean Spray by Moneybag Yo. Let's drink some more today, some more to I'm high now, might float away if I was outside now, outside now. I'm vibed out, new Cartier's have my eyes now. My 
admit I'm a bit surprised there was not more chart impact for Moneybag Yo this week. I've never been a fan, but I know his fan base is pretty active, and you'd think for his first project in two years there'd be a little bit more. Anyway, this is one of the two songs that charted, and I'm still not there, I'm sorry. From the stock trap percussion to the hollowed out melody to how Moneybag Yo has the same overstuffed triplet flows, where his ad-libs continue to feel weirdly layered, and he defaults to a lot of lean saturation and waffling on whether he wants this girl or not. But at the same time, I also can recognize some small improvements in his flow and a pretty sticky hook that I get why this would work or maybe even stick around, even if I'm kind of indifferent on it. I mean, it's fine. The hook's good enough. I could see it making a run. It's just not special by any means. Number 62, Self Love by Metro Boomin and Koi Larray. He don't love himself, tryna love me, cuff me, told him true to him, he don't trust me. Look, this might come across as more negative than it should be about this song in particular, because Koi Ray is capable of making better music when she doesn't default to riding the laziest pop rap samples imaginable, and this song is a prime example of that. Not precisely great, the bleeping melodic loop against the snap and shuffling trap percussion, it feels like the definition of being underproduced, and there is a part of me that wishes that Koi Ray would show a little bit more vocal flair other than imitating Playboy Cardi, but the hook across the vocal line and synth is remarkably sticky, and I like the content as well, highlighting how you can't fully love a partner if you don't love yourself, and that kind of gets messy when she's feeling isolated and lonely along the way, potentially compromising some trust when she tries to bring forth more truth, and when those strings open up and then decay back into the synth, yeah, you know what, I like this a lot, it's a really solid little song. Check it out. Number 59, Keep It Low by Moneybag Yo featuring Future. Yeah, she can't post my bitch. She can't. Ride D, round around, ten stick. Ten stick. Slide through, come back, hit your bitch. Alright, another early song on the mixtape, this time with Future, all about how these guys love giving the toxic dick to women because they clearly love it so much. I'm torn on this one. It's clearly a dark power fantasy with the creeping dread of the pianos behind the sharper trap whir, and Future is probably the most aggressive he's been in a long time, and there are indeed people who like the toxic dick. At the same time, though, we're dealing with Moneybag Yo's overstuffed flow that can feel really clunky, especially when he brags that he has your your girl hooked on phonics, and Future's flow can feel just as slapdash early on until he locks in, where he then talks about having mind control on bitches, and telling her not to cry in his phantom, and that she belongs in the streets, but all the bitches look up to him like God, and no, I'm sorry, this brand of malevolence is going way past consent, it feels gross, especially when you know Future's history that comes with women. I mean, I get for those who are fans of Vintage Future, you're probably gonna really love this, but I don't. I'm not a fan. Number 48, Bread and Butter by Gunna. put that on my dead brother, yo. He talked so much, I showed him I'm a real hunter. Won't say it, but he know I still got real cutters, yo. So I'm gonna try to be careful around the discourse with the court cases with YSL and Gunna, whether he's a snitch or not. The plea deal interwoven with the question of whether he's gonna testify at a later date, that's the sort of complexity that rap communities on social media are really not equipped to handle all that well, especially when the street codes often feel more like guidelines. I mean, he's certainly seen more tangible backlash than I expected, which is likely more tied to the composition of his audience and connections and old allegations that have been dragged up. Look, my point is that, that there's been a lot more discourse around this song as he attempts to restart his career. And you know, I'll say this, I like this more than I thought I would. For one, the groove is actually really good. That bass line, the liquid guitar, the well-blended trap percussion. Even if Gunna's voice sounds a little compressed, you could tell he cared about making this song right. And it's an attempt to clear his name of all the snitch allegations and point a lot of fingers at others who aren't exactly as clean. In this case, suspected to be Lil Baby, some people in his camp, and folks tied to QC. But beyond some of those shots, the second verse I think is more revealing, as Gunna shows that this sort of backbiting and slander to drive him out of his community, it's exactly what the lawyers and police want to happen. This sort of ostracism is weighing on him heavy. So do I believe him? 
Honestly, it doesn't remotely matter what I think or believe here. I get the impression that Gunna really wants to get back to the lightweight trap and rapping about disposable brand names that stay messed up in all of this, and thus the track's a bit of a balancing act trying to clear his name and not push that many buttons. And I'd actually argue it's well executed enough to sell to those who want to believe him. It also happens to be a pretty damn good song for what it's worth, so yeah, I'd give it a chance. Number 43, Popular by The Weeknd, Playboy Cardi, and Madonna. So I've now seen some of the idol. I gotta be honest, I wasn't impressed. It's not nearly as scandalous as it was advertised to be, beyond some interesting commentary and themes on performativity, mostly courtesy of the underweight script and acting that really did not engage me from the leads. But hey, The Weeknd's still trying to release music around it, so now he's teaming up with Playboy Cardi and Madonna? Okay, why not? In truth, both Playboy Cardi and Madonna feel kind of perfunctory on the song. Playboy Cardi has that bouncy post-chorus and a bridge that actually kind of works, but Madonna sounds really flat and underwhelming. I mean, I get why she is here, given her relationship with fame and popularity over her career, but it feels like it's more for her name than anything else. And I'm not against The Weeknd playing the Svengali towards the dark side of fame. It's the role he plays on the show and trying to find something real in this brand of pop, basically with a lot of underpowered allusions to the 1980s. But the song here is nowhere near strong enough to back all that up. With the spare, sandy, and clanking percussion feeling very thin opposite some splashes of synth that is not having anything close to the punch it needs, especially in the melodies. It just sounds very sickly and unfinished, barely able to support any sort of atmosphere. Hey look, I might as well be talking about the goddamn show. So yeah, this kind of really sucks. Next, number 31, BZRP Music Sessions, Volume 55 by Bizarre App and Peso Pluma. <laughs> I mean, it's not surprising that Bizarre Rap got Peso Pluma for a session, but I was curious what the hell it would sound like, especially as Peso Pluma came up on the regional Mexican sound, and even if he might have wanted to make reggaeton, Bizarre Rap's synth-pop production is normally kind of in a different lane, closer to EDM. So color me shocked that this is just a more produced regional Mexican sound, while all the farty staccato horns and brittle acoustics and Peso Pluma's nasal squawking, as prominent as ever as he goes on about it having his heartbroken, so he's gonna flex all the more now and she can't have any. But I'll be damned if the added subtle balance and the tighter pickups lead to a more refined sound, even before we get that synth-inflected trap breakdown that should not work at all, but... <laughs> actually kind of did. Between this and Bad Bunny hopping into the sound, I think if I found a singer with a more likable voice, maybe more focus on accordion over the horns and some halfway competent production, I could get into this regional Mexican sound. There is potential here. I've certainly heard enough of it. So yeah, this is a decent track. Give it a shot. And finally, number 13, Put It On To Floor Again by Lotto featuring Cardi B. She got a problem, imaginary smoke. Bitch, you said it's up. And put it on the floor. Am I the only one who saw this collab and thought it could be a really bad idea? Cardi B is the sort of performer who has enough charisma to blow anyone off a track if she actually cares. And given how Lotto plays in a lot of similar territory, it seems like it was setting her up for a comparison or failure, especially as this is a remix of a song that didn't move any units at all a few months ago. And I kind of get why the creaking melody around the piano, the very brittle trap percussion, and Lotto's trying to go hard and and, well, I mean, I prefer this to her pop shit, but loading her verse with all sorts of subs at Nicki Minaj is not exactly smart, because Nicki is a better rapper than her and is petty enough to shoot back and harder. Now, Cardi's verse is better, but it's indicative of how I just prefer to hear Cardi B than Lotto, even if I think she's got better subs at Nicki, who will play the pen game and write so many bars, but Cardi B will win in different ways, mostly just by pithy remarks and blocking her. I mean, it's Joe Budden versus Drake all over over again. The rapper is going to try to bar you to death, but that's not the only avenue where beef is won in the modern rap game. You got to play smarter, not harder. But all of this leaves me with the feeling that the discourse around this song is more interesting than the actual track. I mean, it's fine. I just want to hear the new Cardi B album already. Just saying. But that's our week. Kind of a weird one, but definitely got plenty to say and choose from with the best and worst. In the latter category, 
I think I got to go with disappointment as my primary factor to popular by the weekend Playboy Cardi and Madonna here just a total misfire with all the talent that they could have pulled off what they were attempting and it's going to be a tie with peaches and eggplants by Young Nudie and 21 Savage for just being an embarrassing mess. This honorable mention is going to keep it low though by Moneybag Yo and Future because it's just disgusting. Now best of the week we also have a tie for here and it's with two sides of Metro Woman with Hummingbird with James Blake it's going to be alongside Self Love by Coy Ray. and what might be a little bit more surprising to all of you is that Bread and Butter by Gunna is going to be the honorable mention probably the closest thing to anything from Gunna that I've liked or will remember longer term. Now next week Again, we got the fallout of all this. Probably no album bomb. Maybe something from Noah Kahan or that Madonna-Sam Smith collab because we're just not lucky enough to get anything from Janelle Monet. So, okay, stay tuned for that. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.